Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go over what's going on in the NFL. Well, primarily the San Francisco 49ers. We are currently, I think, somewhat still second best in the NFC West. Following up a second straight win against the LA Chargers on Sunday Night Football last week. Around week 10. And that puts us only a game below a game below the Seattle Seahawks that fell short on in Germany in an earlier morning, uh, you know, morning airing of, fo of of football against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I feel like we're we're just gonna cruise by if Seattle end up being frauds over facing underwhelming opponent under over underwhelming opponent with Geno Smith getting to air it out against good offensive. Uh, offensive targets. I mean, shit, bro. If I was a bu if I was still an average quarterback, how how am I supposed to be saying this when the only person that they lost was Noah Fant over the middle of the season over a chest injury, and you still got DK Metcalf, a great first down option and a great red zone threat, like uh, f like uh, you know. Tyler Lockett. Kenneth Walker, that's been a show out and a great starting running back over 500 rushing yards over his last five starts. He's been outstanding, and he's always been a deep rushing threat for the team next to Rashad Penny. Good rushing rotation. Defensive units looked more, have shown more effort over the past several games than the past several seasons they had with Russell Wilson. We got Quandre Diggs whenever Quentin Richardson, Joe Quentin Richardson sees a mistake. Or Nick Bellamore, Joey Blunt, whenever he's up swatting over the ball. They have big hitters on the defensive front. I'm not going to denounce, like, there hasn't been an upside over the Seattle Seahawks. But they're just frauds that are leading the division right now. Speaking about frauds, the Super Bowl champions of this year are 3-6. The 3-6, and six, bro. If anybody thinks like the the Rams are going to make anything any noise in the second half of the season when they're going to be playing against us, just know they don't. They don't. Stafford's questionable due to a concussion that he suffered. So is Josh Allen after his game against Minnesota. People thought he was going to be even barely going to be playing it when he was playing off against Minnesota. That registers a third straight loss after their bye week against us, where we mopped the floor with them on a homestand. Um, no, the, we were we were actually in SoFi when we beat them 31 to four, and with superior rushing. Uh, no obvious, you know, r passing schemes. We're not that overly reliant on trying to chuck the ball, and you know. We, we don't always have to try to make it a we don't have to make it a shootout every game to keep it close and competitive our game against the Chargers proved that but the Rams they, they they have been a disappointment in the NFC West people thought they would have the easiest easiest thing to go by but they open up facing off against the NFC the AFC what uh, AFC East divisional opponents on prime time people thought that'd be a winnable game coming out of the chip out of their shoulder winning the game they did start off okay actually winning the next three of their last five uh, ending five and two but now falling uh, only winning three of their last five games until their bye week but beating bottom feeders like the Falcons, Cardinals, and the... Yes, the Cardinals are bottom feeders. Your starting quarterback can't look above the offensive line. That's why he's always getting those tip uh, tip drill interceptions. Every deep play he got and that he got to rely on trying to rush over for a first down. Do not tell me that Kyler Murray is not just getting bailed out because of the all-pro talent he has moving the field like James Conner, DeAndre Hopkins, and then getting Robbie Anderson. You guys still lose! But this makes the this makes the Cardinals even out their series record. Nobody ends up dominant in this situation. Then they fell short against Tampa Bay on primetime football, and then they lost to us on Monday Night Football. I think that's telling you guys something. That the Rams are not going to have anything easier. They can only edge out one time, and it's possibly on road games. 
while teams already can figure out their offense with Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill, who they play next week. No, actually, in a few days. And uh, ne- the week after that, where they got the Chiefs. And then they face off against a superior rushing offense, a deep threat, undisciplined secondary like like the Rams are not going to do well against a team uh, such a receiving threat like, you know, the Seattle Seahawks. I only see them beating the Packers, Raiders, or the Broncos. And then they got to follow up, follow up face it back on SoFi, I guess, facing off against the Chargers, and then they're off to Seattle. The, these road games are out of their situation. This coming out that they have more road games than they do home games. They are, they have everything against them in the final, in the final four weeks of, ge- of play. And for the final four games, they're gonna be playing off uh, for the for the last three games of the season. They're gonna be playing off against uh, you know, all pro quarterbacks. And Geno Smith and Derek Carr. <laughs> They got him twice. Unfamiliar territory. Uh, do do I see Seattle popping back over to the conversation? Uh, depends. It, it's only a game where ten, Tampa Bay needed to win. Their rushing was more on point. That interior defense needs to be pick, uh, you know, fickle the back. Passing was more over to their strong suit, and Geno just... They, they can still close out comebacks uh, like they did in the second half. We, we don't know what's going to happen with Stafford. Rushing's already a mess, thinking, like, Cam Akers was a better... Well, if they traded for... If they didn't, you know, get rid of... If they still got Henderson, that's like five foot nothing, and only there for fullback nickel plays under center... They got barely any depth over on the rushing rotation, and they just are. Uh, I can't take them seriously when they're just play action fake, corner route to Higby, corner route to Cup, and sometimes we'll try to chuck it over to Allen Robinson that we forget is on the field. It and just barely, barely the secondary. Like, if it isn't for Jalen Ramsey causing fights, what what really is there? Honestly, what what is there? We forgot. Da- uh, they they still have David Long, Darren Kendrick, Leonard Floyd. That started majority of the games, and he only has one forced fumble over the season. Ty- Taylor Rabba has not been that poignant on doing anything defensively. The only person that's gonna, the only thing that's gonna be there is Wagner, Ramsey. That, like as toxic as he is, he is vocal and a very impactful part of the secondary. Justin Hollins when he wants to show up, but he's not there. I think he's injured. And Aaron Donald. So, oh, and Jordan Fuller, I think. And Terrell Burgess, but he only made one over one start, and they use him as a rotation piece over the starting secondary. And most of the time, the Rams are just allowing first downs because they can't stop their midfield because you've signed an aging de- defensive unit. <sighs> Niners are coming out of winning the last two of their last three games. And after our bye week, the previous uh, on nine, uh, week nine, after beating the Rams on primetime football, well, not prime time, but it was a four o'clock game. It was late. We came up on a Sunday night game and beat the the Chargers because of superior rushing offense. Even though the Chargers were they were beating us up up the deep ball so easily, even though they lost three of their starting three, they still beat us without Keenan Allen and Mike and, and Williams. Uh, if Robbie Gold was keeping us over to the game with Cameron Dicker. Until we did full a QB sneak over the ball. Christian McCaffrey rushed after like he was averaging around six to five yards per game, and it was getting a bit a bit laid out until there was a shoddy mistake going for it instead of punting it when there was at least about a minute remaining over to the game, uh, two minutes remaining over in the fourth quarter, the, and the Chargers punted it. Uh, no, they went for it. It was a shoddy mistake. 
by the coach. And end up with us with Robbie Gold's last field goal and a game ending interception when they did push over a play action when they were on their own four. I, I, I don't know what to say. A, a team with this much noise made over to the offseason and the team to possibly take over the claim for the AFC West after the loss of Tyreek Hill. The the coaching is possibly the, possibly the biggest downfall for the LA Chargers. I don't know what to say, guys. Khalil Mack was keeping it, keeping it effective. He had like a few tackles for losses, one QB hit. Uh, pushing over the play action, Garoppolo was barely even sacked. Derwin James d just wasn't there. They were just pushing us over the backfield. Asante Samuels and Khalil Mack were the only like vocal parts of the defense. You could push it over to Van Oy or whatever spread defense they were doing that couldn't stop our receiving core. When it came to stopping Jawan. Or Debo. I, I still don't get our, our backfield plays when we got rid of Wilson still for a late round pick. When we could have kept him for the rotation so Debo still didn't uh, run through. That was why people were so excited over the trade. And of course Nick Bosa. Outstanding, bro. For the amount of times um, Justin Herbert was just stuffed up over in the pocket in the, th in the second and third quarter and the fourth quarter, it was amazing. Drain G Grinlock got an obvious, got an obvious uh, personal, you know, intentional hit, illegal hit over the helmet over to Austin Eckler. It was fucking brutal. I think he got, yeah, he got ejected. Jimmy Ward, he, he wasn't that effective as we thought, but Chavarius Ward was very effective. Very effective over his backfield stops. Over the corner. We were pressing over the curl routes, but we were still allowing like 30-yard to 45-yard bombs for two touchdown passes over Justin Herbert. That was, that's something that I don't want to allow when, when we are ranked around at least top 15. Or, or no, we're still like a top ten defensive unit that allow like the fewest amount of points in the first half, and I want to keep that, and that should be happening consistently. And of course, we got Tol Tolanoia with the with the game ending interception over the over the an attempt on a scoring drive for the Chargers. Man, I I, I I'm a, this comes out of you know. Bad coaching, bad personnel, just poor inconsistency over the over the head coach. I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to blame this on uh, Justin Herbert. He, he, they, they're decisive over the play, and you're just seeing that for yourself. Like it's that weak. What's going on? But other than that, well done performance by the offensive unit. Defense cleaned things up. Nick Bosa. You get my, I don't, I don't know what to call it, golden rusher of the day or something. I, I'm going to think of a name for it. But you were the ace of the Niners uh, in our game against the Chargers. And I can't wait to see you play again. Hopefully healthy in the Bosa Brother Massacre. Because, you know, Joey Bosa does play for the LA Chargers. Besides that, we'll be off on the road to face off against the Arizona Cardinals. They did come up l beating the LA Rams last week. So there's at least a chip on that divisional clash up that we have. And then we're off to face the New Orleans Saints and the Miami Dolphins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a three game homestand until we're off to face Seattle at week 15. So, uh, next five games are on our own home soil after a game against Arizona. What are momentum coming off injuries and consistencies of, Obviously, the most threatening game we have out of all of this is the Saints and the Buccaneers. No, not the Dolphins and the Buccaneers. But Arizona, the divisional games can go either way. Even though I feel like we have the biggest upside out of the chip on our shoulder we have against uh, 
LA, Arizona, we we beat we beat Arizona in primetime play kind of a lot coming out of all this. And they also have at least a more consistent rushing threat. And Colt McCoy did play pretty played pretty well against us. So that that could be our only uh you know momentum com- coming out of all this. Buda Baker off of, uh, will be limited over practice status. We don't know when he's going to be coming back. DJ Humphreys, uh, Byron Matthews. We still have that hamstring injury that Kyler still has. We don't. They're possibly going to be keeping. Uh, they're still going to be keeping uh, possibly uh, JJ Watt over the lineup, and Randall Moore is still you know, but limit him. But that's only been a few days ago since uh, week 10. It's been a f- nearly a full week, so uh, hopefully they're not in 100%. <laughs> Seeing we have a threatening defensive unit, and Colt McCoy does his, has his flaws, but we'll see that. We'll see by then. Subscribe to the D- uh, DSD show if you want updates, news, and media, uh, entertainment, wrestling, anything I'll go over. Tomorrow, I want to possibly do a review of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever film and my thoughts on the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what's going to be happening on it. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see that and more so we can hit it to 300. Thanks for watching. That's it for me.